If you're a real estate investor or you want to be a real estate investor and you're looking for more money and funding for your deals, regardless of what your hard money lender or your broker or your banker would say, you're at the right place. Don't go anywhere because we're getting ready to plug you in on the funding for your deals. Well, welcome to the show. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority. Welcome to Real Estate Investing uh, with Jay Connor. And I'm so excited to have with me here on the show, Chaffee Wynn. Hello, Chaffee. How's it going? Awesome, Jay. How are you doing? Doing fantastic. Hey, did we have a fantastic time last week at the live event? So much so that I'm back online with you again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. So, um, so yeah, folks, um, whether you're, you know, you're, you're, uh, watching or you're listening, uh, what I've got for you is I have got a, um, I got a website to give you and here's how I'm going to plug you into the money. We've got another event coming up right around the corner where we have, um, my private lenders come to the event for you to network with. Uh, in fact, let me give out the URL and Chavi, why don't you just give a little highlight of what happens at this event and what happened this past week then um, the audience can go over to the URL and, and check out and see all the specifics about what this event is about and how it's so different. So we're going to go ahead and put it up right here on the uh, screen for those who are viewing www.jayconner.com -E forward slash money podcast, all in lowercase. Uh, that's www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. So Chappie, um, give the folks an overview of what happened uh, at the uh, last recent live event. And by the way, folks, here's why you want to stay on this show to the very end. We had amazing, excellent questions turned in by the uh, attendees at the live event. And so uh, we're going to uh, go through some of these questions and give out the answers there are amazing questions and there's going to be a lot of valuable content on this show. So you definitely want to stick around for, um, for the answers to these questions that we're going to go, go over. But yeah, Chavi, um, uh, to give an overview of what happened and what's coming up. Well, first of all, let me just say that most people go to your boot camp expecting basically to learn how to raise private money because you are the private money authority. You're the one that teaches everyone how to, raise millions of dollars of private money. And so that's what they expect going to the boot camp. And what I can say is that when they go there, not only do they learn how to do that, they learn so much more because you show them all your systems on how to find deals, how to automate your entire business and how to sell deals in 72 hours or less. In addition to all the details about how to raise private money, you also have your team members come so they get to meet your team members. Uh, we do a fantastic bus tour by the way i hear so many comments about all the students how they love the bus tour that it's your properties not just some random properties on the mls and they really like to be able to see the properties before the rehab as well as after the rehab and so they get their input about what you've done or what they think you should do on the before properties and then on the after properties they see what you actually did and what your team did because we both know, Jay, that you've automated it, so you're not really doing a lot. Your team is doing most of it. Right? Well, that's true. And I mean, you know, I didn't get there overnight, and I actually, I actually teach that at my live event. You know, if you're brand new, you know, to real estate investing, you've never done a deal, this event is for you because I teach at the event how to build your business from scratch, what to do first, what to do second. And of course, this event is for seasoned investors as well because we all do the different, we can all learn from each other. Seasoned investors are also looking for more funding all the time for their deals. And so, you know, I, I teach what I've been doing the past 15 years. What worked two years ago might not work uh, today. So that's why I'm still actively, actively involved in the business. So yeah, I'm so glad you brought that up, Chavi, because this event is not just about private money. It's about everything from start to finish, super nuts, A to Z, and you know, it's not just about rehabbing. I mean, for those that are interested in rehabbing, we go into a lot of detail on the luxury bus tour. But uh, you know, we talk about the uh, the pretty house business at my boot camp as well. We also talked. There was actually a couple wholesalers at the event, and so we show them how to use private money for wholesaling specifically too. 
There you go. Yeah. So yeah, it was fantastic. Of course, you know, we had our mastermind meeting uh, the two days prior to the live event. We'll be having our next mastermind meeting as well uh, at the uh, upcoming event. So, um, and I'll tell you another thing, very, very valuable. And I, and, I, and I hear these comments myself, you know, you and our other coaches offer the free one-on-one -on -one strategy sessions. And I know you get wonderful feedback on that. So just take a second and tell everybody about the one-on-one -on -one strategy sessions that we do at the event. And then let's just dive right on into the content and go over some of these questions. So the one-on-one -on -one strategy sessions, we have basically a set amount of time where we sit down with you, the student, and we don't force you to sit down with us if you don't want to. We'd love for you to sit down. We love everybody to sit down with us. And our focus is really just to go through whatever the challenges you're having in your business or in your life. Um, as a matter of fact, one of the students, uh, obviously it's private, so I don't discuss the details of it. And instead of going for half an hour of talking about her business, we actually spent about 45 minutes to 50 minutes talking about what's going on in her life that's been preventing her from implementing the business. And so, you know, while that's not common, most of the time we are talking about business and how to help you move forward, it really is specific to you, specific to your situation, and really how can we help move you forward in both business and in life? Exactly, exactly. All right, Chaffee, well, let's, um, let's review some of the questions. And I think you've got all the questions uh, that were turned at the live event. So let's review some of those and give our, our listeners and viewers some valuable content here. Well, we had a ton of questions today, and uh, unfortunately, I know we don't have enough time to go through all of them. And so what I've done was that I've picked a few of them that I know that would help everybody here and that I thought would really uh, be powerful for the listeners to hear. So let me just start with a basic one that we get over and over all the time, which is, you know, if you don't have credentials starting this business, let's say you've never picked a house or never bought a house, you're brand new in the real estate industry, or you're just getting started, um, you know, how do you overcome that? How, how much is, does experience really matter when you're talking to private lenders? Yeah, excellent question. So, and, and I hear that question all the time as well. So it's sort of a depends answer. So let me give, let me give two, two different answers to that question. So the primary categories of people that you as a real estate investor will borrow from two different categories of private lenders that you'll borrow from is what I call your warm market. That's people that you've got some kind of relationship with, you know, they're in your cell phone, you know, they're real Facebook friends, not fake Facebook friends, but real people in your, you know, that you associate with in some kind of way. It could be business, it could be personal family, you know, your social network, et cetera. The other category of private lenders are what we call existing private lenders. Now, I'm not talking, just, just so I'm making this very, very clear to everyone, Chavi, I'm not talking about hard money lenders. When I say existing private lenders, I'm not talking about hard money lenders. I'm talking about individuals that loan money from their investment capital or their retirement accounts, self using self IRAs, individually to us as a real estate investor and borrower. So those are the two different categories. Now, in the warm market, there is um, a, a trust and relationships come into play in a big way when you're borrowing private money. And so if, if you are a newbie and you've never done a real estate deal before, one thing that we do is I teach my students not to borrow more than 75% of the after repaired value of a property. Let me repeat that. Do not borrow more than 75% of the after repaired value. So there's, that leaves a 25% cushion or equity position for the private lender. In other words, if a property or house has got $200,000, it is $200,000, we're not going to borrow more than $150,000 in that particular example. That gives a $50,000 equity cushion to the private lender. The reason that's important is that if for some reason the, the house is not selling or price needs to be reduced, et cetera, well, it could be reduced down to $150,000 and the private lender is still made whole. So that's very, very important. So one answer to that question is, if the real estate investor does not pay the private lender, 
than the house does. In other words, the private lender, uh, we don't borrow unsecured funds from the private lender. We always give the private lender collateral. They always have a mortgage. Some states it's called a deed of trust. Most people call it a mortgage. They are protect their, their, their loan, their principal loan amount is protected by the collateral of that particular house that's on that deal. So that they've got this over to culture. So when my student learns simply and easily how to explain that, then the private lender is well protected. However, some private, some individuals, no matter how they're protected, may not want to loan to a brand new, you know, uh, real estate investor that's never done a deal. They don't want the house. They don't want to get the house back. They don't want to hassle with the house. So then the answer to that question is a new real estate investor in that case should, my advice is it would be to leverage the relationship of another experienced real estate investor. So for example, uh, I have my students that, I, that, that I'm willing to joint venture with. I, I, I joint ventured on deals. We have rehabbed uh, almost 400 houses and I'll be glad to introduce you to my business partner. I just happened to have rehabbed all of those houses, right? And so uh, leverage the relationship. Again, in the other category of existing private lenders, in most cases, an existing private lender that knows what private money is and knows what private lending is, in most cases is not going to loan money to a brand new real estate investor. And in that case, they would definitely want to leverage relationship with another real estate investor. Awesome. And I know too, Jay, what I like about working with you is that when your students work with you, you'll actually get on the phone and do a three-way call with their private lender. So not only do they learn how to speak to a private lender or a potential private lender, you're there as their partner. And so you're real deal. Uh, one of the uh, students that I recently worked with uh, wanted me to do the three-way call that I, that I offer. And so we did the three-way call. We were on the phone with his potential private lender for, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes. Uh, he introduced me to his potential private lender, three-way phone call, and I took over. I, I, I talked about the private lending program and how it works. And by the end of that call, my student's uh, new private lender, potential private lender, pledged $250,000 right there on the phone call. So yeah, that's a, a powerful way to leverage, you know, the relationship. It was definitely worth the call for 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, Jay, one thing that you mentioned, uh, I just want to clarify, one thing that you mentioned when you were answering the question was the difference between hard money and private money. And I know that we've talked about it before. It's not one of the questions because you explain it in the boot camp itself. And uh, just for the listeners today, though, can you make sure uh, tell the difference between what a hard money lender and a private money lender is? Sure. So most of the time, a hard money lender is a broker. All right. So most of the time, a hard money lender is an institution or a mortgage company. And so the hard money lender is a middle person. Now, the hard money lender is actually borrowing private money. OK. And is marking up, you know, mar he, the, the, the hard money lender is making money on money. All right. And they're peddling money. So um, in this world of private money, what I teach is how to circumvent the hard money lender and go directly to the source. In fact, I've, there's a number of hard money lenders out there that have actually been to my event to learn how I raise private money so they can go back and raise private money for their hard money business because it's, it's the same thing. But you know, the big, some of the big differences is that a hard money lender is typically only going to loan you 65 to 80% of the purchase price. And of course you as the real estate investor, you got to come up with the balance. Well, in the world of private money, you get a hundred percent of your purchase price. You don't have to come up with any money. In fact, we get money when we buy because we always borrow more money than we need to do the deal. And you know, hard money lenders pull your credit in the world of private money. There's nothing pull, you know, there's nothing about your credit. It's totally uh, collateral based. And, and of course there's, well, one big difference is interest rate. You know, our average interest rate right now from hard money lenders is 14%. 
We borrow all, all day long at 8%. Hard money lenders charge points. In the world of private money, there are no points. Hard money lenders charge extension during the term. There are no extension fees in the world of private money. And of course, at the, uh, at the event, we go over all those details, but those, that, that's the highlights on the differences and between a hard money lender and private lender. How many of your private money lenders are actually involved in the real estate industry? Like it sounds like hard money lenders are familiar with real estate. That's what they do. Uh, they're in the industry and they're looking to make money off of other people in the industry. What about your private lenders? Do they know anything about real estate? No, no, they, they never heard of private money before I told them about it. Never heard of private money lending. I'm trying to, th I've, I've got 48 of them right now. And of course, starting out, you don't need 48 private lenders. Start with one or two. Uh, my first one I uh, started um, at two hundred fifty thousand dollars. My first private lender, but um, no, that the, and they don't and they don't want to be involved in real estate investing from an active standpoint. What they love is the totally passive. Uh, they loan their money and you know they earn high rates of return safely and securely. And you. even with the rates that I pay, my profits um, are averaging sixty four thousand dollars per deal. I think that's key because once you have, uh, once you start approaching, let's just say somebody from a real club that, you know, wants to lend you money and they know about real estate. Now they want to know every single little detail about your deal. And it's a big distraction. Oh, dude, well, and that's just it. And you know, I, I, what I'm getting ready to say, I teach in detail at the event, but here's the deal. We want to keep, we want to keep every deal we do as easy and simple for the private lender. I don't want my private lender to have to do anything except wire money and collect checks. Okay. Uh, whether they're using investment capital or, or they're using the, you know, their retirement funds. So, and that's all they want. That's all they want. In fact, I had a private lender, uh, after church, uh, like, uh, yesterday, I guess it was that, um, came up to me and they said, you know what? I want to give you another hundred thousand dollars because I love getting these checks in the mail. So, you know, and that's the way it works. I mean, the, re the referrals and the extra money keeps coming in. They always got more than they tell you, right? That's right. So another question that you brought up is that you uh, mentioned sometimes that hard money lenders are using private money and then they're charging up for it. Is there any issues with paying referral fees to people who might refer private lenders to you? That's an excellent question. In fact, I think I recall it being asked at the live event. So there is an issue with that. So I'm going to give you the legal answer. We all know in the real world, you don't get in trouble until somebody complains. My, rec my uh, recommendation is stay legal and don't give anybody a reason to complain, right? So the legal, and I'm not an attorney. I never played an attorney on TV, but I can just tell you my understanding of the law is that you cannot legally pay a referral fee to any, whether there it's a current private lender or anybody that's referring somebody else to you. You must be a, uh, if you're going to pay a, a fee on finding money, you've got to be a licensed uh, mortgage broker. All right. But hey, but here's what I have found, Chappie. When you take care of your private lenders and they, and they find out just how easy it is for them to be involved and they can't get any, they can't get these rates of return anywhere else this safe and secure. It's automatic that they're going to want to tell their friends and the business associates and, and family members and whoever that's got investment capital or retirement funds about what they're enjoying uh, because it's very natural for them to spread the word. And I mean, they're really not spreading the word to look after me. <laughs> I don't think they're spreading the word to their friends and family and, and, and business associates and whoever they know, because they know it's a great deal for the private lender. And I think uh, you mentioned a couple of things and I think that's key in, in just in business in general, when you're staying above the board and you're doing everything and keeping it simple and you're not worried about doing something that's iffy, then you don't have to worry about anything, right? You could just focus on doing the right things, focus on growing your business and everything else takes care of itself. Absolutely. You know, I, I was delivering uh, this morning 
section, uh, which are my, as you know, my upper tier students. And, um, and half of the, no, about 20 minutes of the session, we talked about integrity on that call. Why would I talk about integrity on a coaching call where I'm teaching real estate investing strategies and principles? Because as you just said, it doesn't matter what business you're in, okay? I mean, if you're not running your business from a place of integrity, a place of character, a place of keeping your word, and when you tell, I mean, I'll tell you what, and you and I have talked about this, Chabby, if you just show up and do what you say you'll do at the time you say you'll do it, you just left over 90% of the crowd behind you because most people don't do what they say they'll do. So absolutely. Yeah, and again, you know, when, when uh, you come to the boot camp, you really get to see that with not only you, Jay, with your entire staff, with your entire team, you know, what you see is what you get, is you're very authentic, and, and that's the thing that we hear over and over again, is that, you know, everybody there is real, right? Uh, we're not saying things that we don't do, we're not doing things that uh, are, you know, we shouldn't be doing, and everything is uh, straightforward. You got it. You got it. And that, and you just said something that triggers this. I don't teach anything unless I have done it and I'm still doing it. I don't subscribe to the fact of going and reading something in a book or watching something on YouTube or, you know, listen to somebody else's podcast, you know, and say, Oh, that's great. I think I'll go teach that. I teach it after I've tested it and proven it to work. Awesome. Well, Jay, let's get back to some of the questions from the, the live boot camp. Um, one of the main questions was, you know, one of the things that you teach is to go out and network, right? And go to BNI group or some uh, other group, Rotary Club, and tell them about your business. So what's your elevator pitch when you attend these events? What should somebody say when they attend a BNI or a Rotary Club? I'm so glad uh, that question was asked at the event because it triggers I need to tell this short story, and that is, I teach you know I I teach uh, what to say when you're meeting somebody for the first time, and so you know, let's say Chaffee, you and I have just met for the first time, and we introduce ourselves to each other, and let's say we don't know anything about each other or nothing, right? So, what's the first question? What's one of the very first questions if you're the average person, which you aren't? But because we've been in each other's world so long, we don't think like the average person. But if you were the average person and you're at a networking event, what's one of the first questions you're going to ask me? Show me the money. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is not one of the first questions you're going to ask me. <laughs> I don't know, Jay. What is the first question? What should one I... of the first questions you're going to ask me is, what do you do? There you go. <laughs> right? What right. do you do? And so... You know, somebody asked, so let's say, you know, somebody asked me, what do I do? Let's say I told them I'm a real estate investor. Well, I guarantee you in their head, they're, what's in it for me, <laughs> right? In fact, when people ask you, what do you do? They don't really care. They just don't know what else to ask, right? So when somebody asks you and you're a real estate investor, what do you do? Wouldn't it be really cool to give them an answer that would, first of all, pique curiosity. Secondly, move the conversation forward to where it would be engaging. And thirdly, lead to the possibility of you telling the person that just asked you, what do you do about private lending? So here's how I answer the question. So ask me, Chaffee, well, Jay, what do you do? Well, Jay, what do you do? I teach private lenders how to make a lot of money. And then I do what I just did. I shut up. So I say, I teach private lenders how to make a lot of money. So first of all, the person that just asked me that question has no idea what I just said. They don't understand it. But they, the first thing they heard was make a lot of money. They heard that. They heard make a lot of money. They might have heard me say teach. So I just framed myself as a teacher. And then I said private money. They're not going to know what private money is. So there's three things that's firing off in their brain that they're trying to understand. 
And so I just wait them out. And so I'll get like, what did you say? Or what is that? And so it naturally leads to me talking about what private money is, what private lending is. So I love my answer and I got thousands of students now using it <laughs> all over the world. So next, so those of you that are viewing in the show, watching or listening, you might want to write that down. Well, don't use that answer until you know how to answer or talk about private money or private lending. So, so get to the event and then you can start answering the question that way. But, uh, you know, for our viewers that you're, you're seasoned investors, you know what private money is, use it and it will attract more funding to your deals. What do you do? I teach private lenders how to make a lot of money. That's awesome, Jay, because as you said, when people hear, you know, I'm a real estate investor, a bunch of things go to their head only when they hear make a lot of money, they want to know more. <laughs> exactly. Everybody wants to make a lot of money. Awesome. Um, let's see. Let's uh, go to another question then real quick. Uh, let's just say, hey, I got private money. I, I uh, went through your process, followed your system, and now somebody says they had $100,000 that they can invest in a private, uh, in, in a real estate deal with me. Uh, what do I do with their money while I'm looking for that deal? <laughs> that's awesome. And that's the reason that's such an excellent question is because the private money, in fact, this is a multifaceted answer to a, um, a, to a great question. So when I have a new private lender and they've told me that they've told me they got a hundred thousand dollars or whatever, the range of investment, and of course, I need to know if it's investment capital, just liquid capital, or if it is in, in retirement funds, because that's going to depend on what they do next. Obviously, if it's in retirement funds, I will need to assist them and get, help them get their funds moved over to a self-directed IRA company, which they then can lend me money. But let's say they've got their money ready to go. They've got their money ready to be deployed. First of all, you as the real estate investor that's borrowing the money, do not accept, do not take, do not accept unsecured funds. So, you know, many times I've had a new private lender come into my world and I say, okay, Jay, I'm, I've got this much, I'm ready to get started. You know, what do I do? Write you a check? Uh, you know, what do I do? No, private lender does not give funds or send funds or wire funds directly to the private lender. So we cannot accept, I, well, you can, but you shouldn't. Do not accept funds from your private lender until you have a deal ready to close. And when I say deal, it can be a single family house. That's, that's the world we operate in mostly, but it can also be on a commercial deal, you know, duplexes, triplexes, quadplex, small apartments, whatever. It's all the same process and system. So your private lender needs to keep their funds until you have a deal a, or a property identified that will collateralize their loan. So okay. you gotta just to clarify, uh, I should never take their money and stick it in my bank account somewhere so that, um, that I'm using it because if, if I don't have a deal, I don't want it to go away. Only if it's in my account, then I'm using it, right? Exactly. Exactly. So do not accept funds anytime personally yourself from the private lender. And when you do have a deal of, uh, identified, then the private lender, uh, their funds to fund your deal directly to your real estate attorney or your closing agent. I know some, some uh, states are, are more accustomed to using uh, title companies or escrow companies, but whoever your closing agent is, that's where your private lender will wire their funds to uh, the closing agent. And then no funds are dispersed to the seller of the property or, you know, I always get a check when I buy, it's called excess cash to close. Uh, none of those funds are dispersed until the documents are signed. Uh, the closing agent has recorded the documents on uh, public record and then the private lender is protected and then the funds can be dispersed. Should I wait? To find a property first before I look for a private lender? Should I, you know, get a property under contract and then go look for the money? I'm so glad you asked. The answer is a resounding no. In fact, I teach 
get the money lined up first. The money comes first is what I teach and that's what I've practiced. So here's what I mean by that. There's always deals. There's plenty of deals, right? But the majority of offline uh, real estate deals, in other words, the majority of sellers who are for sale by owners, okay? The majority of them are not going to accept a creative way to buy, such as using seller financing or buying subject to the existing note. The majority of those people are going to require all the money when you buy the house. And of course, if you're buying out of the multiple listing service using the realtors, you're always going to have to have all the money. So I focus on and teach, get the private money lined up first, and then you'll never have to worry about missing out on a deal because you didn't have the money. I mean, my lands, how much more confidence does a real estate investor have when you've got, you know, a hundred, 250, $500,000, of pledged private money burning a hole in your pocket, right? I mean, I don't know about, you know, well, I do know about you, Chaffee, but I don't know about some of our listeners. I'm not interested in making an offer on a property unless I know where the funding is coming from. So yeah, get the money lined up first. Jay, that brings up a good point because when you got cash ready to make offers, not only can you make offers, you can make better offers. You can make oh. offers that close faster and you can make uh, get a better deal on the offer, right? Well, that's another distinction between hard money or going through a traditional mortgage company or bank and private money. All my offers, I put in the offer that we can close, I can close literally in seven calendar days. So the only way that's gonna work is if you've got direct access to the private money. I mean, even in the world of hard money, realistically, it's three weeks before you can close because in the majority of the cases, uh, an appraisal is going to be ordered. You got to fill out an application. Uh, they're going to be pulling your credit and you know, all these time entanglements that cause you not to be able to close so quickly. So, you know, I have gotten countless deals accepted where I know my offer, was less than a competing offer from another real estate investor or whoever the other offer was from, but I got it because I could close within seven days. I, I, I'm thinking of a particular deal right now that I just bought a few weeks ago. In fact, it was on the bus tour last week, the home on Quailwood, that really, really big, nice, luxurious home. Well, it's going to be luxurious when I get through with it. But anyway, I know that I had a competing offer uh, at $195,000 and I bought it for $190,000, $5,000 less. And that was a bank owned property. That was a bank owned property. And the bank took my offer because I could close it in seven days versus whatever else the other uh, person that made the offer, uh, whatever time frame they said they needed. So yes, closing quickly, very, very important to get you more deals. We actually had a couple at the boot camp, Jay, for that particular reason is that they're in a hot, hot market and they kept losing deals to people who can close in seven days or less. And it took them 21 days. And so even though they made good offers, them taking 21 days, they kept losing deals to the cash offers that would close in seven days or less. So exactly. in fact, I even know who you're talking about because they told me the same story. <laughs> Yep. And uh, in fact, um, one of the deals I think would happen just like two weeks ago that they missed out on and he was using hard money. He was using yep. hard money to fund his deals and he just couldn't move fast enough. So yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. I remember who they are. Yeah. So when the, uh, when the money actually gets wired from the attorney to the, the, the escrow account or wherever, does the attorney have to get in touch with the lender in order to make that happen? Or how does that work? Do you send over paperwork and you're the one that does it? Or, or how, do, how does the attorney facilitate that transaction? I'm so glad that question came up at the event because it's also has a multifaceted answer that's got the, what I'm getting ready to say is crucially and critically important. So first of all, let me answer the question directly, but that triggers some other information I want to give out right now on how to protect everybody from losing hundreds of thousands of dollars. So when you have a deal ready to close and you know, you got the private money lined up from a particular private lender 
and you've got a closing date set. So what you're gonna to want to do as the borrower, as the real estate investor, you're going to want to get or send the wiring instructions, the wiring instructions to your, for your closing agent's trust account, their escrow account. You're gonna to wanna to get it sent to the private lender. Then the private lender will take those uh, uh, wiring instructions, and if it's their investment capital, they will give that to their bank and wire the funds directly to the closing agent's trust account. If it's coming from retirement funds, then the, the wiring instructions will be given to the private lender's self-directed IRA company, and then the self-directed IRA company will use those wiring instructions to send the funds directly to the closing agent's escrow uh, or trust account. Now, that's the answer to the question, but that leads me to pass on this information, and that is, well, now how do you, or how should you communicate the wiring instructions from your attorney's trust account to the private lender safely? Now, I'm gonna tell you a quick story. I know of someone, this would be a private lender that was giving wire, was given wiring instructions by a real estate investor borrower. This just happened within the, like, the last 12 months. And so the private lender was given the wiring instructions by the real estate investor. The private lender went to wire the funds and something very, very bad happened. Let me tell you what happened. The real estate investor emailed, take note of that. The real estate investor emailed the private lender the wiring instructions. In the subject line of the email, it had the phrase wiring instructions. A hacker hacked the email and changed the wiring instructions in the email to the hacker's wiring instructions. And in between the email being sent from the real estate investor to it getting to the private lender, when the private lender received the email, everything remained the same in the email except the wiring instructions. The private lender wired the funds to the hacker's bank account. Now, the good news to that story is that the, the, the hacker was discovered and found out about and the private lender did not miss, got their funds put back into their account. But the moral of that story is do not ever wire, I mean, don't ever email wiring instructions. You can, take a, you can take a picture of them and text it, but I don't even recommend that. I mean, there's probably a way to hack text. I say give wiring instructions verbally, verbally, and just double confirm it's right. And, and, and so then, you know, of course, there's probably a way to hack, you know, a telephone conversation. Well, of course there is, you can tap into a telephone conversation, but that's the safest way to communicate wiring instructions is to just give them out over the telephone. In fact, my real estate attorney's office, they, they won't wire. I mean, they will not email wiring instructions at all. It's all done verbally. Awesome. And in the interest of time, I got one more question to ask, and then uh, we kind of got to wrap it up here. Only uh, real quick, when all that wiring takes place and everything, there's some fees associated to that, Jay. And the question at the boot camp was that uh, who pays for the transaction fees when borrowing money from a private lender, a private lender's IRA? Yeah, excellent question. So uh, I have never paid a transaction fee for any of my private lenders uh, deals that we've done together. And the only time you have transaction fee, well, you can have a transaction fee from the self-directed IRA company that will charge. So my private lenders have never asked uh, to, um, you know, be, be reimbursed. And, and, and here's the deal. You know, if your private lender has their, their investment capital, their retirement funds at another uh, place or another stock brokerage, they're going to have fees associated with that account as well. So when they're using self-directed IRAs, it's just fees there instead of fees at a, you know, uh, at a, another a stock brokerage or whatever. 
But um, anyway, you're right, Chaffee. We are out of time uh, for this show. But thank you so much for joining me here on the show to um, first review some of these questions. Those were great questions that you chose from the live event. I got to say, Jay, we just, I mean, that was only a handful of questions that was asked at the live event. And obviously, you cover those questions and a lot more at the boot camp. So uh, I definitely recommend if anybody's listening to this, thinking about it, don't think about it anymore. Just go and register and get to the boot camp. Yeah, yeah. Check it out, everybody, at www.jayconner, J A Y C O N N E R dot com forward slash money podcast. Well, folks, thank you for uh, tuning in and watching and listening. Um, if you're on uh, iTunes, of course, subscribe, rate, and review. If you're watching uh, one of my YouTube channels, uh, you can subscribe to that as well so you don't miss out on any of the uh, upcoming content. And um, so a personal invitation. I hope I see all of you or at least a good number of you at uh, the upcoming live event, which is right around the corner. So with that, I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. And here's to taking your real estate investing to the next level. Bye for now.